All right, we are live here on bourbonblog.com. Uh, one of my favorite gents in the spirit business is your friend and mine. It's Guillaume Lemay of Maison Ferron Plantation Rum. We love these products. These are some of our very favorites of everything, of whiskeys, of rums, of everything we drink. And we're trying three new ones. So uh, yeah. welcome, Guillaume. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. Welcome. You know, great to see you as usual. And uh you know, uh, I'm glad that uh, you're well equipped on your end with all those delicious products. You're lucky because I don't have all of them here since they are pretty much impossible to find. They're still they so rare. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I feel yeah. lucky. I, I, I'll, I'll virtually uh, I'll virtually pour you some. And thank you for always making sure we we try um, the, the very best. It's all your whole line is so delicious. You know, we love the pineapple rum. We love the XO. You, uh, you're welcome. Even. Um, you know, no matter what it is, someone was just telling me the other day, your original clear rum, the uh, stars. Tell me, the three stars. Yes, three, I know. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a four or five star. It's so good, but it's called three stars. <laughs> we were just saying, this three stars is is better than um, so many age rums. I mean, it's just so delicious. Everything you guys do is so well done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But the three stars was actually elected the best white rum in the world at the Ultimate Spirits Challenge. You know, they have and, a German's trophy, so right. that's basically like the highest ranking, and uh, right. and we won it in the white rum category, which is a big category. It's a very crowded one. And, uh, you know, I, the other night I was discussing, actually, I met a few judges from the Ultimate Spirits Challenge. It's not, they're not always known out there. Right. Very, very important guys in the spirits business, and they explained to me the, the, the system of uh, grading all the spirits. Wow, it's to serious. make it up there, it's actually very, very hard, you know, and it's very fair. It's, yeah, it's very fair, and, and they, they really don't see the anything. Back. They don't know what they're tasting, and you know, and yeah, uh, yeah. and we got an incredible uh, rating. I think we got ninety-five points. That was wow. the highest rating in the in the whole white rum category. Well deserved. It's it's so delicious. They're all so delicious, and what I love is is the. Um, the continued work, the passion, and the uh, really just the the vision for something new that you all put forward. I mean, this this first one will will pour a little bit. We'll talk about it and talk about what's new uh, at Plantation. This is the Stegan's Fancy, which we were there for the launch of Stegan's Fancy with you all at Tales. Uh, how many years? Six, seven? How many years ago did it come out? Stegan's sure. Fancy, 2014. Oh, even longer. Eight years. We were there for yeah. a while. We love it. Yeah, yeah. And you've taken this and you've put it into used uh, healing. Peated, yeah, yeah, tealing cask, peated whiskey, tealing cask. Well, beautiful. Stiggins, you know, uh, has always been a, a challenge for us in the making. Yeah. I can tell you that. Last year, uh, the guys in Cognac peeled by hand 8.2 tons of pineapple. You know, so so let's just say that this is our favorite product, but this is not the favorite product of production. How many because pineapples it, is that? Uh, that's a lot of pineapples. That's a lot. I, was I, say I will not fun. give you the, the, the exact Literally. amount, but I can tell you it's a mountain. It's a mountain. You know, we use the skins, you know, as much right. as the flesh. So we have to peel everything in the right the right way. So, you know, last year, uh, Stiggins was basically a little bit over uh, 300,000 bottles you know, uh, worldwide. And wow. when we started in 2014, we made a thousand bottles just for the caps, a thousand of the cocktail. And uh, and then people wanted more. So we did uh, more batches, you it's know, growing. one by one. And then now uh, we limited ourselves to that quantity, which is okay because a lot of it goes to, uh, to uh, cocktail programs. We still work a lot with bartenders on this and, you know, bar managers. And then last year, uh, you know, they decided to do something very special with Stiggins and to have a very limited edition, which was basically the talk of two friends that are uh, very close to each other because they share the same passion is uh, Alex, Alex Chasco from, uh, from Tilling Whiskey yes. and Alexandre Gabriel from Maison Ferrand, as you know, who does all our blends and also is the uh, prop proprietor, uh, the proprietor of Maison Ferrand. So they decided to swap barrels. So Alexandre sent Alex some uh, Stiggins cask because Stiggins is rested 
for about uh, three and a half months in a French oak cask. Wow. And Alex used that to finish uh, one of his whiskies. So you, ha- you do have out there somewhere in Europe a limited edition of Tilling in a Stiggins cask. I love it. And us, we asked him to send us some delicious uh, Irish whiskey, but peated, peated casks. So you have that beautiful smoke element. And for a long time, we were trying, you know, to really see how we could ever release a beautiful infusion of pineapple, but with more like a toasty character to it, you know. Uh, and, uh, if, you know, it really never worked very well from infusion or distillation. And, you know, we tried this and that was just incredible. The, the trick here is to do it very slightly so that the, the peated element of the whiskey does not overpower overpower the Victoria pineapple of Stiggins. Right. So it's Stiggins. We haven't changed anything to the product. You know, all we did was, you know, a very you know, well-controlled, uh, beautifully executed finish in a PD stealing ad. PD tilling cask. Very, very subtle. It's subtle, but yet it's there. It's that little touch of smoke. As you said, it, it's like grilled pineapples. It's like these mm. nice layers of just a, a wisp of smoke. Beautiful pineapple rum. It's it's so beautiful. Again, you're talking about how many months did you finish it then? In the about month? three months. Three months. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, it would have been too big. About, otherwise, it would taste like a peated whiskey. Right. It would be too big. You this know, is a very a, subtle. Yeah. Uh, finish and you can actually you can find this when it's it's how many bottles of this were, were made? so we did twelve thousand bottles for the 12, US yeah. so we allocated that to uh, a few uh, a few stores and uh, a few of our uh, uh, restaurant and bar partners as as well you know have it on the menu and right. we started shipping it uh, what in June you know and uh, the last cases are coming in now and uh, you know I think you you can still find that you know uh, pretty well in the US. Yeah. You know, if you go to any store that sells a lot of Stiggins, they will have that. That's for sure. They're going to have yeah. this. You you may be able to find it next year. Are you, th- are you going to do something kind of different each year with pineapple? Just more of a one Nothing is, Nothing is on the map right now map. for Stiggins. Okay. You know, we just wanted to make something special. Okay. Really, it's like, you know, everything that we do at Maison Front is usually the result of a conversation. Right. And it depends on if Alexander is going to have that conversation again with somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know these guys were talking about you know uh, playing with uh, pineapple and Stiggins you know on the whiskey uh, and uh, and and uh, PD whiskey side. Right. That's what happened. You know, it's just like Stiggins at the origins was the result of a conversation between Alexander and David Wondrich. So beautiful. Oh, it's we. I mean, it's been such a um, such a favorite over the years of ours and so many people that are. Spirit fans, rum fans, cocktail fans, uh, and this just adds something different. I mean, this is so nice. So just you know, no, it's, this... it's beautiful. So now this yeah. in an old fashion. If you like to have old oh, fashioned, okay. it's fantastic. Yeah. It's really I just delicious. Just a little and bit... also in a Negroni, if you want to do a rum Negroni with this, it works really well. How would you? What proportions would you use? Just about just like same? just like a regular Negroni, but instead of gin, you put uh, the Stiggins Smoky Formula. It's very oh, good. Like oh, I'm gonna have to try that. I like that. Okay, so a little of that Stiggins. Uh, is that, that would be your favorite way to do this one. Is that right? Oh, I like the old fashioned. The old fashioned would be the oh, favorite. Yeah, the old fashioned is really good. That'd be the yeah. favorite. With a and, big, and as we as we look cube. at your, what say that again? Sorry. With a big cube, like with a, a big nice cube. Ice yeah. cube yeah. Meltdown. This is so good, Guillaume. As we look at uh, all that's been happening, maybe since we, you and I last connected, since we last told our viewers, you all have really grown uh, everything that's happening in the world of rum a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, as you know, uh, we've been uh, we've been in rum for a very long time since uh, 1999, 1998, 1999, right. and from day one, we've worked with uh, West Indies Rum Distillery. In Barbados, that was our very first partner uh, for plantation rum. Right. So we always had incredible Barbados expressions, and uh, and you know back in 2017, the distillery on the beach, West Indies Rum Distillery, our number one partner for all plantation rums, went up for sale. So right. you know Alexander was already very good friends with all the management there, with uh, Andrew Hassel, who's still the managing director today. You know, there was just a phone call. It's like, you you know, you got a bit for this and we have to get married finally. You know, <laughs> after like dating for so many years, 
we have to become one family. Right. And that's what happened. You know, it's crazy, but the a dream really came true where we, uh, we became one family. And all of a sudden, Alexander and his team in Cognac had access to that incredible distillery and uh, uh, heritage of Barbados rum with all those records that we uh, had to basically sort out that were in the vault since 1893 on all types of fermentations, you know, fermentation uh, bills and, uh, you know, distillation methods and uh, the origins of all those crazy steels that some of them were not working anymore that we put back to life. One of them that we are actually right now, you know, you were asking me about uh, our most uh, exciting and recent uh, future project. We have one called the Rockley. The Rockley uh, is a small little steel that was very much, uh, uh, you know, mystified in the last uh, 30 years. You know, uh, a lot of people call, you know, said, oh, the pot steel at the at the West Indies Rum Distillery is the Rockley. You know, we, you can find some uh, some old releases of West Indies Rum from the 1980s, 1990s, you know, from different bottlers you know, all over in Europe. They call it from the Rockley steel. Okay. We don't think it's the Rockley steel because the Rockley steel that we are restoring now, the one that the, the, the team has been calling the Rockley for the last 50 years, that's, that's what we know because one of those guys has been working there for 43 years and he can remember his dad who was working there for 47 years before, calling it the Rockley. That one has been sitting on the lawn all that time. It was still, it was completely disaffected. So the Rockley hasn't been disturbing for at least 50 years. You know? But the Rockley that they call now is from a different steel called the Greg Farm, which is a beautiful pot steel that's from the 1850s. So this one right now is uh, being restored uh, uh, in a, in a, in a, at, at a uh, how did you say that a copper smith a copper smith in, in cognac right and the specialty is to restore very old steels and we will put it back in commission in 2023 so it'll be back in commission for the first yes. time in 50 years and we will run it once a year with a very special fermentation bill that uh, we actually uh, you know looked at and was used for uh, some very, uh, you know, very old, uh, very old distillations back in the 1920s, 1930s, using a little bit of seawater. So this one is going to be <laughs> definitely liquid, liquid archaeology. You know, and, you're putting a little, you're going to put a little seawater in this one. Oh yeah, no, no, but you know, it's right. brackish water is an old technique. Yeah. In, uh, in fermentation of uh, of molasses, you know, it was also oh, in Jamaica and. Uh, and we, you know, we are right by the sea, and they would use a little bit of the seawater, but just a little bit in the fermentation. To the salt would basically stress the yeast and create different type of aromatics. You know, so you would have actually a little bit of a briny element uh, to it, which is very interesting because you can use that as a blending component. You know, so that still is, uh, yeah, that's one of the exciting things that we'll be doing. That's for sure. And it's taken a lot to get it back up and going, then, to get it fixed, to get it right <laughs> I mean, so to, to give you, so how old is that still, right? 50, yeah, it has been used in 50 years, right. I can tell you, it's like nobody at the distillery really knew. Nobody knew. Right? And, and then we had one guy called David Pym, a gentleman called David Pym, who is the owner of John Doerr today. And he's, he's known every single pot still in the world by first name. He knows exactly where they are, you know, uh, you know where they come from. The, this guy is an expert at, uh, you know, steels, copper steels in, in particular. Right. He looked at it and he was like, this is the oldest thing, oldest thing I've seen in my career. Wow. And by the design of it, by the way, by the rivets, by everything that's around this pot steel, by the closure, this is a, a late 18th century steel, more like the Washington steel design. It's, it's really old. Then. So those yeah. little, like those old Washington steels that were making apple brandy at the end of right. the 18th century, in, uh, during the uh, you know uh, the revolution, you know, in the in the United States, that's it. This is it, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this has taken a lot. I mean, it's it's kind of ridiculous. It's uh, it's what uh, 150 is 200 liters, right? Yeah, you know, it's very small. 
That will be something. And so again, in 2023, that'll be back up and going. Yeah, so we hope that we'll be able to fire it again. You know, uh, in a, I mean, with steam, of course, no no open flame uh, at West Indies Rum Distillery. But we'll be able to operate it again in, uh, sometime in 2023. They're finishing up finishing up uh, the restoration as we speak. So anyways, that's one of the things at West Indies Rum Distillery. And, you know, a lot of things happened during COVID. We are... Uh, We've been we worked really hard also on uh, on uh, you know reactivating try to reactivate and create uh, sustainable uh, 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 activities for uh, Barbados agriculture and uh, part of this was our cut and dry uh, project right you know and that's Which, what I think that's I sent you a, a bottle of this this is so beautiful I've In this the, is this is so so unique and i'm really grateful to uh to have one of these because this is only available where where's the only place you can barbados the, we barbados. can only sell that in barbados right now because to make that coconut run, it's a coconut it's an artisanal infusion of coconut in barbados run right uh everything every single thing in this product is 100 percent barbados including uh, the uh, sweet element that we call browning that's actually uh, um, burnt sugar, so it's like super artisanal caramel that is made from uh, Barbados sugar from Port Vale, Port Vale sugar factory. So everything that we use there is 100% Barbados, and of course the coconuts from come from one farm called Nichols Farm, and Mr. Nichols accepted to contract 12,000 coconuts with us this year, so that we could make 12,000 bottles. Just about and, a, a whole coconuts in this bottle. Uh, there is like a whole coconut in that bottle. It's uh, bottle. it's overripe coconut with almost no water left. You so that's why it's actually any... difficult to convince farmers to work yeah. with us on this, even though we pay a much higher price that they would sell right. it to the coconut water vendors. You know, but the whole idea here is to grow as the farmers want to grow with us, so that we create a beautiful, sustainable business. Right. Uh, on the coconut farming. So where do you don't just sell them for the water, but you sell them overripe for another use, which is in that case, the making of Barbados coconut rum. The real why, thing. why is it tougher to get the, you know, I mean, to find these, to find them overripe, why is that more difficult? But because the Barbados, the, the coconut water business in Barbados is huge. Okay. Okay. And what we don't want to do is to uh, put uh, coconut water vendors out of business. Oh, sure. Oh, of course. You know, so, so that's why we have to work with the farmers and accept their terms on when they can actually supply those overripe coconuts and not let them go away from the water business. Because you don't want to hurt the water business. I get it. No, okay, that makes no, sense. It's, like that it's, makes it's, sense. It's, it's working, but yeah. with that uh, new type of coconut, that new type of harvesting, and ripeness, that's actually opening up a, a new avenue for coconut farmers. For coconut farmers, right? Yeah, so so that's that's you know that's that's a lot of fun because it's really creating a, a more sustainable, you know, uh, profitable agriculture. Sure. For farmers, you know, the difference between ripe and overripe. What's what's that time period? What's the coconut look like? Well, overripe is basically the coconut falls from the tree. They don't even have to pick it up in the tree. They love it technically because there is, you know, you don't need a nacelle. You don't need like uh, the, the equipment to go pick it up from the tree. You know, now it, it just falls by itself. You it just pick fall. it up on the ground. Is so we have at Nichols it... Farm, at Nichols yeah. Farm, we have now, uh, what is, he's got 30 trees dedicated to us. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So usually coconut water, that's what it would be known for other products. Wait a little bit longer, it becomes overripe. Is that a little bit longer, a few weeks? Is it a month? Do you know how long it is? Just out of curiosity. So, you know, the, the, the full ripeness of a coconut, I think, uh, comes after uh, well over two months. Well over two months. Okay. Yes. Beautiful. You know, so it's basically like a shipment every quarter that we receive. Okay. And, you know, additional to picking up the coconut from the ground, right? It basically cuts the flesh, it cuts it out and puts it on the sun and oh. dries it. That's why it's called cut and dry. Cut, and that's why the name is cut and dry. Mm -hmm. Cut yeah. and dry. 
and and then we he, he delivers you know the dried coconut flesh you know into mesh bags right and then uh, when we receive those mesh bags uh, at the distillery we do an infusion in in a vat of beautiful barbados rum it's a blend of column and pot you know and once we have that infusion made we blend it with aged barbados rum ah okay so so the ages of all the um the rums are what that you are infusing well the, you know it's uh, i would say you know besides the essence which is infused you know so that's really like uh, you know unaged barbados rum right. but you know 18 months all the way up to eight years would be the age rums that we use you know once we blend in you know the uh the, the basically the coconut element so how long is it how long i mean if you're able to tell how long is it infused for does it sit for a few days it's, i think it, it's about three weeks of infusion three weeks three yeah. weeks mm -hmm. so it's sitting and again you have to have the dry uh coconut because why 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 does it have to because be it's because otherwise it's there is too much water element too much water. So when you dry it you concentrate the flavor and you know when you taste it right you get that really cool like cereal so, Cheerios, uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> type it of has right? so many. It has a spice. It has a creaminess. Mm -hmm. It has. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just like a perfect taste of a coconut. I mean, it's almost, it's almost more coconut-like than a coconut. I mean, that's what it's just like. It's like it a goes macaroon. beyond a coconut. You got a little macaroon element to it. Right? Yeah, macaroon element. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. if you've ever had a coconut rum before, for for everybody watching and listening. You will, you know, those have most coconut rums have this like fake note, right? This is a hundred percent real, and it goes just to me. It's beyond real. It's just so delicious. it's a, it's so real that we we can't export it, you know. So right. I think that I would say mid next year we'll be able to send a few parents out there. Yeah, you, you know. see it in the U.S. a little bit. Yes. So in the U.S., what's going to happen is probably a, a very hard allocation to right. uh, maybe a few stores, but definitely restaurants, you know, because a lot of guys will want to put it on the cocktail menu and do some incredible things with this. So good. And it's, it, it, it really does take uh, so much to, um, to make this. So well done on this. I mean, again, uh, when you first released the pineapple rum, I was just so excited this again is on that level of like, wow, there's never been anything quite like this. As far as I know, no one's ever done a coconut rum like this ever, as far as I know, right? As far as we know, I've never seen that. It's just to make it that way, it's <laughs> it's a uh, it's it's the actually process. you know it's it's let's just put it this way. There is there are much easier ways to make coconut rum right. and probably make people happy. Right. But uh you know this is not the shortest way to get it done. Right. Right. But it's all natural, so. you know, it's all it's all fruit. This is beautiful. I uh I love what you've done here with all these. Of course, we'll we'll talk about um the renegade last, but again, if you can't find these, they have so many rums. We should give them your website. Obviously, I think a lot of these folks know where to find you, but all the rums you do, I mean XO. The three stars, you name it. Um, Thank you. You're doing so many good ones. Uh, we should probably also mention you're welcome coming in. Um, well, already out on the shelves, you said soon is the. You, did you have that close by? The other rum you wanted to mention? The. Um, oh. Um, <laughs> yes. This, I need to send you a bottle of this. Yeah, I can't wait to try it. This is the Cane Rock. What do we have here? Uh, this is this, this one took, you know, you know why it's a turtle on the bottle? It's a turtle. Yeah, it's a turtle, yes. Because <laughs> it took us forever to get it done. That's it was slow. <laughs> it's like the tortoise and the hare, right? It's a turtle. It's, that's a, it, and it, it almost looks like it's just crawling. 87 there. tries mm. to to make the perfect spice rum. You know, and spice rum is always something that we try to do, but we would never get to that level of perfection. Right. And you know, it all started with the base. The base itself is uh, Jamaican rums from Clarendon and uh, and Long Pond. So the base, I mean, very few spice rums, you know, that I know, really have an incredible base to start with. You know, because people sometimes think that you make a good spice rum with some aromas and sugar, you know, and some vanilla. But no, 
you know, it's all about the rum, of course. Right. Just like, you know, you don't make great stiggins without delicious rums. You know, That's so, right. So in that one, we use uh, different marks from Clarendon, uh, from from Long Pond. It's all aged. You know, same thing. You know, aged rum for spice rum. It's not always easy to find. You know. And then we use uh, some spices uh, that are also, some of them are original from uh, Jamaica, like ginger. Right? right. And we have, uh, so uh, ginger from Jamaica. We have a, a whole vanilla pod. Like the whole thing, not not a vanilla essence, the vanilla pod that we actually infuse in the rum uh, from Madagascar, uh, and some other spices that are really there to bring a, a lot of complexity to uh, to the to, to the spice rum. Now, the secret of the spice rum, besides the fact that the the, the rum base is just incredible, is that we do a finish in a sherry PX uh, butts, like those big casks. Right. So we have a little bit uh, of a sherry PX finish. It's not the whole thing. It's twenty percent of the blend has been uh, finished in sherry PX, so that you really have, you know, that uh, really beautiful dried raisins, red fruit, you know, sweeter element to it. That's not just you know the sugar element that you would add, add, add to uh, to the spice rum. So that whole combination really makes an incredible product. Incredible product! Wow, and again, so it's, that's, it's coming in right now on market. That's you know, out uh, coming out now. Yeah, yeah, it's coming up now because it was supposed to be here last June, but uh, <laughs> the world being in the world on right now, right. it's actually just now. Wow. Excellent. Well, again, the first two. What was that? You said only about twelve thousand bottles were made of cut and dry. How many bottles? Uh, so the cut and dry is uh, right now. It's only in Barbados, and it's about yeah twelve thousand bottles. Twelve thousand. Uh, Barbados market. Same story with Smoky. Smoky, same thing. You know, it's oh, a two thousand six pack uh, batch. This one is a limited edition, and it's a one shot. Cut and dry. <laughs> we try to produce as much as we can. Sure, nice. growing it every year, and then. Um, what do we have? Renegade. This is, I love the bottle. There's a real story here with the Renegade. What do we have here? So this one is actually also a very limited edition. And as part of that, that's the Renegade barrel number three. Yes. So that's the third release from Alexander. Because, you know, did I ever tell you why we call this the Renegade barrel? Why do you call it Renegade? <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been to Cognac. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we spent some time with you there. Well, Alexandre, as you know, you know, is a little bit décalé. You know, it's not always, it's not always good at following the line. So sometimes he likes, <laughs> he goes away from the line, and uh, and he's he was always been part of the BNIC, and uh, at that time he was actually part of the commission, the, the 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 communication commission. So it's like the communication. You know, he was in charge of like basically PR for the BNIC, right? So right. he was helping with the PR, and uh, and he's done always a ton of research, a ton of research on uh, the origins of the AOC and the different practices and old techniques in cognac blending, and he discovered something really cool. That in 1923 there was a law that was uh, uh, basically uh, approved by the French government to make cognac, where you you could use uh, oak barrels. Oak barrels that contain a wine a cognac or a wine product. So that's very interesting. You used to be able to, and it would be called cognac. Because technically, you know, according to that law, right, uh, you could use uh, red wine, sweet wine, uh, wow. Madeira, port, sherry. They were using what they had too, right? And most importantly, the 1945 AOC did not refute it. So there is nothing in the 1945 AOC that says that you cannot use OCAS that contain wine products. Okay. So he asked at the, at the BNIC, I just saw this, can I do it? And and can I talk about it? And, uh, and one of those guys said, uh, you can do it, but you cannot talk, you cannot talk about it. Can't call it cognac. No, you can do it, but you cannot talk about it. Okay. You can call it cognac, but you can, you know, that's that's legal actually to use 
a cask that contained a wine product. Right. And he said, well, you know, listen, if it's legal, then I'm going to do it, and I'm going to talk about it. And that same guy, you know, said, but Alexander Gabriel, you will always be a renegade, which is renegade oh, okay. in French. <laughs> So that was the beginning. That was the beginning of our Renegade Barrel series. Mm -hmm. And the first one was a finish in Sautern cask. And this one we called Cognac. And then across his research and learning more and more things about the Ferrand family and having access to a lot of really cool documents that show the inventory of cask that they were using in the 19th century, end of the 19th century for blending, all the different types of cask that they were using. He saw chestnut. Not oak, chestnut. They were using chestnut yes. cask. So guess what? Now we have cognac in chestnut cask. And our renegade, renegade barrel number two was finished in the second maturation in chestnut barrels. But this one didn't could not bear the name cognac on the label. So we had to call it eau de vie. Eau de vie. Or, you know, for the TTB, I have to call it artisanal brandy. Okay. <laughs> and that's what we see here is the artisanal brandy here. Voilà. So this one voilà. is basically artisanal brandy, but that's the third expression of Renegade Barrel. And Very this smart. one is definitely not politically correct because that's also something that Eli Frond, you know, one of the Frond back at the, in the 1870s was doing. He was using Jamaican rum cask. So, okay. so of course, you know, we, we, we are part owners of Long Pond and Clarendon. We have incredible Jamaican rum casks. So we use a 22-year-old HJC, which is one of the marks, beautiful marks from Long Pond, uh, Jamaican rum cask. And we so that's aged, a 22-year-old barrel. Yeah, yeah that's a 22-year-old uh, Jamaican rum cask. So that contained Jamaican HJC mark for 22 oh. years. So it's wow. there is a lot of lot going on in that cask. There know, is tons. And this, this is the gentleman you're referring to, right? This, this so guy? that's Eli Ferrand the Eighth. Yes. So Eli we took Ferrand one of his VIII. portraits that was in the in the Ferrand house, and we put him in the middle of the jungle with a with a little hummingbird. Hummingbird. I'm, yeah. This is so so, so good. So, so there's the so, again, so based, layered. Ah, oh, it's it's incredible. It's you, you know, get so the it's, cognac, it's a ten year old grand champagne wrong. cognac. 10-year-old Grand Champagne Cognac, so that's already your next one. Yeah. That we mature for a second time mm. in beautiful Jamaican rum cask, and that gives you a whole like different layer of uh, very old tropi tropical fruit, you know, right. that mixes so well with, uh, you know, all the tropical, like uh, sandalwood, like tropical elements of an older cognac, you know, all the spices, uh, you know, like uh, clovey uh, aromatics, that you would find sometime in Jamaican rum, you know, all those uh, burnt, like, you know, like uh, plantain elements, right. burnt, you know, yeah, would would be would mix so well with, uh, you know, like the honey character of cognac, and us. it's it's crazy. This they is sing not... well together. It's that it has that spice, yeah. some of that that beautiful burnt, that char almost against that uh, real silky mm. cognac. I mean, there's just so much going on here. Um, mm. This is so good. I mean, this is just so, thank you. so good. Thank yeah. you, thank you. This is only how many uh, bottles then? This is uh, same great. thing, like 2,006 packs. You know, we like to do in 2,006 packs. Yeah. So this yeah. is not many. That's it. And it's gone. It's totally it's gone. gone. Once it's gone, it's gone. There'll be another Renegade. Ah, but we'll do another energy. Renegade barrel. I have no idea what's coming up. No idea, mm -hmm. but we know it'll be good. Um, I know there is plenty of Renegade barrels in the cellar right now from different things. You know, we'll <laughs> see what he wants to choose. You know, but uh, it's it's just you know a beautiful way to marry uh, cognac with some other spirits. You know, this is this is just so delicious. All three of these again, um, the Stiggins Fancy uh, Limited Edition, the first ever limited edition under the Stiggins Fancy um, Stiggins Fancy name, done in teeling barrels, uh, the peated barrels, and then we have uh, cut and dry, only available in Barbados. Be watching for it. Uh, hopefully, we'll see some everywhere. I know it may take some time, and I understand why. And the uh, the Renegade, um, so so beautiful. All of these, and then the one that you showed is Cane, Cane Rock. Is that what it was called? Yes, the Cane, Cane Rock. Rock. That is out now. Is it fairly limited, or is that one going to be one we can find? Or uh, this one is not limited. You know, this is a full release, full on release. 
and we started distributing it. Uh, actually, uh, you know, most, uh, you know, most retailers in the country right now right. are just carrying it, you know. So beautiful. We'll, we'll, we'll bring you back on. Uh, we'll try to bring you back on before the end of the year to talk about the Cane Rock. And of course, uh, just so many delicious rums. Uh, head over to um, plantationrum.com. Also, uh, check out the Pierre Front uh lineups um all so good and i know there's going to be so many more ahead as you all continue to grow uh what you're doing on every level you know it's it's yeah. always a pleasure you know there are lots of things you should come and see us at one point you know to see what we're doing i'm gonna do that i'm i'm gonna do that it's been way too long so we're gonna we're gonna make that happen <laughs> my friend thank you so hey thanks everybody for watching take a moment like this video share it uh, tell everybody about Plantation Room and Pierre Ferrand is something uh, special to get your friends, loved ones for the holidays and uh, share the video. And we'll bring Guillaume back again here in the near future to talk about Cane Rock. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe in that, that time I can actually open a bottle with you because I will have a sample with me. <laughs> I like that. Please. <laughs> I always like it when you have a sip with me, my friend. <laughs> Cheers, Guillaume. Thanks so much for being Thank here. Thank you.